Welcome to MZBC, the podcast for um, November the 17th. 17th. Ah, yeah, you beat me I just happen to be looking. <laughs> My man. November the 17th, 2021. If you're thinking that we forgot to switch to the camera, we did not. We're having audio and um, Camera video. decided to switch off. Yeah. Our MacBook got too updated for our camera. And so we'll fix that next week and we'll be back on so you can see Mike's pretty face. He looks tired tonight. Oh, I'm... Oof, struggling tonight, man. <laughs> so uh, we appreciate you guys joining us and uh, seeing where God leads our discussion. We've been, me and Mike, have been together a lot this week, more than a typical week. Yeah, uh, a couple of meetings together and doing God's work. <laughs> it's been fun though. See, we should have done this in your office because we could be chilling out on the couch. On the couch, yeah. I did add a couch to my office just this year. I never had one before, and now I know why, because like on Thursdays when I've been working on sermons and stuff, I'm very tempted to go over and uh, just lay down on the couch. I have been known to take like it I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to do a power nap on this deal. You never get in your truck and just like no. doze off like after I, I've never or, been a napper. Oh, well, me either. That's a true I statement. just, I, I go to sleep and I wake up. Yeah. I now, would, I think this year... There, there was one time I do remember I was like, man, I just, I can't keep my eyes open. I don't remember if it was a Saturday or, or Sunday after we got mm-hmm. home. Uh, we were out. I mean, I, we hopped into bed and I was gone. Yeah. Haley took a picture of me. I was like, look at this. It's, a, it's like a rarity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, probably two, three times a year. I might, it might just catch up with me. And I, I'm, I'm out. Yeah, I'm wanting to not take naps. I feel like I'm going to miss something if I go to sleep. Like still? I'm, still? Still? You, I mean, that's why kids don't want to go go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the same way. That's what, what it is. Do you, you think you might miss, like, paying a bill? No. I think I'm going to miss... Uh, Somebody might leave a light on or something. I don't know what I think I'm going <laughs> to miss because there's nothing I'm looking to do or anything. So That's like when, when Levi was, a, I guess, a baby, an uh-huh. infant. <clears throat> and they he would go to sleep and he's in there you know he's rolling around and making noises and stuff but he's asleep and he's like he's, he's having a nightmare it's like what what is what kind of nightmares he having what, we run out of cheez it's i mean what <laughs> what is a you know a six month old having a nightmare about <laughs> yeah what can they, well maybe they were remembering run out of grapes <laughs> maybe they're remembering um coming out of that birth canal it's just like terrifying. Uh, not him. They go, <laughs> he come out the other way. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> mine did too. Uh, so, uh, have you ever think about that? If you, I know you, we don't have memories of that. But There's probably a good reason. It's probably, a probably be just experience. yeah. We'd be just messed up for the rest You're of like our life. You're like all nice and warm, surrounded by this fluid and all, all these sudden, guts. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it that way, but yeah. <laughs> There's basically guts it's like, around man, you. Yeah, it's like I was going through the jungles. I like, know that's where the small intestines you were coming through. And all of a sudden, you're introduced to this um, cold, brutal world. Mm-hmm. You know, because doctors' offices are usually cold. They are. They try I to kill all those germs in there. They don't want any kind of bacteria growing and stuff. So they try to freeze <clears> them out. Kids come out. Yeah, and, and I then think you grow up and start doing podcasts for a living. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens. <laughs> this is where you're headed, people. <laughs> podcasts that you don't make a dollar on. <laughs> begging 15 people to keep listening to us so we don't get canceled. I <laughs> know. Uh, we, uh, I think the the most viewed, I said this last week, was the one that we had the Lunsford's on with us, and it was quite a few views. And I'm just perplexed at how many people shared that one and listened to that one and then other times it's like i'm emailing it out to people i'm sending it to people like hey will y'all just please listen to this i'll go and watch it like four or five times just to, <laughs> just to are you the, the guy i see one view in like 45 minutes <laughs> after it's you check the stats and it says like this video is viewed from the same ip address 20 times so <laughs> that's me padding our stats but and then i'll watch other like fishing one yeah. guys fishing you know 20, updated, thousand. you know, two days ago, it was like 20,000 views. It's like, <laughs> w- what is the deal? <laughs> I think it's just uh, God's darkness from But a then again, place. those, the, the ones that I watch, they've been up for, been doing it for four or five plus years. And I, we have to remember that most of those people we watch are famous for a reason. That's why we watch them. Yep. It's not just. We're watching them just like 
everybody else. I don't or watch. the other 19,999. There's no podcast that I listen to or watch that is anybody like me and you. That's mm-hmm. just at a church and feel like God has given us another platform to get mm-hmm. out there. I don't listen to any of those guys, and mm-hmm. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Uh, the main ones I listen to are um, some golf podcasts, which are by people that are known by hundreds how, of thousands of people. How many views do they get? Dude, way too many. Really? Way too many. Yeah. I don't want to tell you because we'll just stop what we're doing. What exactly do they talk about? Well, it's a um, current event slash golf podcast. And so, I mean, so they're talking about golf tournaments that just happened. They're talking about Tiger Woods because he's super popular. They're talking about, you know, all the golfers that are out right now and all the things they have going on in their life. You know, the Ryder Cup just happened a couple of weeks back or months back. That was a huge thing. I know when we talked about it on here, you're like, I don't care. I don't know what that is. But it was a huge thing um, in the USA kicked butt crushed Europe 19 to 9 or something like that so that was pretty is awesome. that golf too that's golf too yeah I mean oh team. they you challenge each other yeah I mean you don't I mean, just the go out cup there and is, play the Ryder Cup is uh, like Team USA the best players in the United States so it's like football it's two teams or several people going against formats. each other like they played in formats uh, like if me and you were on a team I would hit the first shot and wherever my shot landed you would hit it from there or we would both hit a shot and whichever one of us hit the best one we would both play it from there. Some days they just play straight up where I play and you play and see how we do. See, do they, they have Baja racing, like the Baja 1000 whatnot. They do have Baja racing. Yeah. See, there's a, a lot of racers in it, but they're not racing each other. They're racing the clock. Uh, yeah. So I thought golf was yeah. something like that. And everything in golf is a competition. Every <clears> week they play to compete. And so they talk about that. Um, one guy lives in New York. One guy lives in... Well, two of them live in New York, one of them lives in Arizona, and the other guy is always traveling, so he just joins via. They do it on that WebEx that you yeah. used to do for yep. your life group. Mm-hmm. So there, there's four different screens on the podcast when I watch it, and they're all in different places. Um, but they just talk about different things. Um, and then the, the, the Unashamed that both of us watch, and now obviously those guys are super yeah. popular everybody knows who. see they they were doing it years and years before mm-hmm. the Niners to come and after out. D- they were doing not the podcast, the podcast but oh. the hunting videos and yeah 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 uh, their, so they had a following their church uh speeches mm-hmm. you know they, they were doing that long before yeah so they have a following already and so yeah. those people just go and watch them on the a tv just yeah pushed them to new heights absolutely and so it me and you need to get a scare TV me. show. Nah, it's probably scare me to death. Need to get a TV show. So where's he going? I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm going to find something to work on. Where uh, is that going to be at? I'm not telling him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think another podcast I listen to is just a Atlanta-based a WSB a radio show. And I don't have time to listen to the radio show during the day because I'm at work and doing different things. So I'll listen to the podcast. And that has hundreds of thousands of views and then i listened to one called um the world and everything in it which if you don't know what that is you should check that you out you said well i don't listen to a lot and your name you've named like five of them so far that's not a lot is that a lot five i mean if you're listening to a lot of five different to, stations though. i don't listen to music i mean i don't i never listen to music i don't know why i don't listen to music you don't listen to music no nah. no nah. i don't what would you listen to if you did if i listened to music <laughs> man <laughs> It would not be uh, the fish, and it wouldn't mm-hmm. be what's the other one? Joy FM. Mm-hmm. I just don't get down with all that. I like it sometimes, but it just doesn't. I know, agree with. You. Yeah, right. and so I don't listen to that. If uh, honestly, if I listen to music, it's uh, Twenty One Pilots. Um, who's some other people that Heather has me listen to? My wife, Lumineers. You ever heard of them? Mm-hmm. Great, they're good. Uh, let me think about uh, what Sublime. Kind of- you know, no, I sublime. know Sublime. Yeah, yeah I know that. Back one. in my day, that was yeah. Sublime. Um, What's something else I might click? Uh, Jack Johnson. Mm-hmm. You know who he is? Mm-hmm. It's more like a beach vibe. Oh. And, you know, it's like a kind of beachy music. And so I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, beachy. And then if I really <laughs> want to, like, listen to music, I'll get back to my 90s days and turn on some rap that was going during my heyday or something you know, so. yeah, I don't I don't get into that one. I didn't think so that's why I didn't want to get into all that because I don't nothing hey, look, I, I don't even know anything like Pearl Jam or Metallica I know I know all that but definitely don't just listen to it see I've got Sirius in my in the truck Sirius XM yeah 
so if you have an account, you can get it on your phone for, yeah. for free. Yeah. And so I've got several on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like Turbo, which would be like the 90s. Okay. Alternative. Uh, Ozzy's Boneyard. Mm-hmm. Ozzy Osbourne. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hair Nation. You know, all the 80s. All the hair bands. Yeah, hair band. <laughs> Lithium, which would be like right now Green Day's on it. And, no, I like Green Day. Uh, That's kind of the thing. I, like I got that. Y2 Country. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like Rock Bar. I got The Message, which is like The Joy. Yeah. Highway, the highway, old, old country. I don't country. dislike music. I really like music. Yeah. And I have way too many wasted brain cells on song lyrics. Like I can just, I can sing thousands and thousands of songs better than I can quote scripture, which is probably a sad thing. But I don't course, dislike I music, but it's just when I'm riding around or cutting grass or even when I'm golfing at the driver range, I have my headphones in, but it's always just listening to podcasts, mm-hmm. listening to people talk. The thing I don't like about um, Joy FM and and, and uh, the fish and stuff like that, it's like every song is same tempo. Same tempo. It's about grace. It's about mercy. It's about I whatever. asked Haley, I'm like, it's do you think stuff, when we get to but... heaven, it's gonna have the same tempo? <laughs> do you think they're just scared to get fired up up there? If we get to heaven and every <clears throat> song sounds like Chris Tomlin, I'm gonna be real sad. Like, yeah. it's gonna be, I mean, I like Chris Tomlin. It's like, okay. God, I'm glad you're here because this place wouldn't be worth so, <laughs> If Chris Tomlin uh, comes across this podcast and hears me say that, I'm, I like your music, but I hope you're not the only thing I hear in heaven. Now, I like Crowder. Oh, yeah. David Crowder. Now, he's Absolutely. got a couple of yeah. good ones. In, in Levi Diggs, uh, Diggs. Yes, he them. does. I've seen videos. There's, there's the Prove It, mm-hmm. uh, Run Devil Run. Mm-hmm. I was actually, before Joy left, I was like, hey, you think you can do something like this? Mm-hmm. That never, never we panned never, out. Um, we went to Daytona Beach, I want to say two years ago, for a student life camp. Dave Crowder was there, and uh, he came out with the banjo. And, I mean, you know where Mount Zion, you know where our church is. We're not a banjo church. Mm-hmm. Our kids aren't banjo listening kids. We're more of a... Uh, what was that white boy guy? <laughs> yeah, that's a white boy holding. What is that? What is that? Thought? But by the end... They, they were, were digging, digging it. it. Yeah, they yeah. were digging it. It was good. Bluegrass got a good sound to it. It does. It does. So so I like music, but like the point is I just don't listen to it going around. I listen to it more when I – I definitely listen to music when I'm working out. Mm-hmm. And my only working out is riding on a stationary bike. I don't I don't lift weights. I don't do push-ups or nothing like that. It's riding on that stationary bike, listening to uh, whatever they're playing during the workout, and that does keep you motivated and all that. But I just listen to podcasts. I like to hear what people have to say, mm-hmm. and I think that's why. Unless I, they call you on the phone, yeah, yeah. Then you don't, don't care too don't much. Wanna, <laughs> the I don't have time for this. Um, <laughs> they don't require me to talk back. <laughs> just <laughs> listen. Uh, uh, but that's why when you were first approaching me with this, let's do a podcast like six months ago, I was kind of lenient because I'm like, what? What do we have to say? I'm not famous for anything. You're not famous for anything. I listen to people because I know them from something else who's going to listen to us were they always famous no hmm. no that's true and so then i came around i came around i i realized it wasn't about you know do we have a thousand views or do we have one view because that one person might need to hear what we're saying mm-hmm. and so i'm down with that um and it's been really cool for me like i said we walk in here every week and um i tell you mike i have nothing to say i got what are we going to talk about see the, when when the football team runs out of the locker room, yeah, I know there's always some kind of a pitcher, and they jump up and hit the door. See, that's that's <laughs> Play like a champion today. Yeah, yeah, so we need that in this room. It's like <laughs> I have nothing to say, and you jump up there and hit, hit the side and hit it. coming in here. <laughs> and then I can sit here, and if you and I talked for two hours, <clears throat> we would come up with something to say. So I do enjoy doing it. Um, it's just I didn't know if we could could do it. Um, to get pe- keep people interested. And then you actually said a couple of people came up to you last week and said, hey, I enjoyed the podcast. You guys mm-hmm. doing a job. And you really like kind of taking it back because it was somebody you didn't think would listen. Well, for one, would even listen to a podcast. Yeah. And then especially listen to you and I. Um, it's like so, I just figured out what a podcast was. How do you know what it is? <laughs> so uh, it's kind of cool. I, I like doing it. Um, and it does give us another avenue and another platform to connect with people. Mm-hmm. I got a text right after church on Sunday. It, it didn't have anything to do with the podcast, but it was because of the live streaming that we do for our thing. Someone texted me that goes to our church and said, hey, I was traveling through Texas on Sunday, 
but I was able to listen to your sermon, and I liked mm-hmm. when you said this, this, and that. And so I told him, isn't God cool? I mean, technology, how cool is that? Mm-hmm. And so it, it, it's just different ways, and I'm with you. I'll try any way to, to introduce someone to the Come all the things to all people. Yeah, I like that verse you used yesterday when we were in one of our meetings. And yeah. Paul, I think um, it was actually one of the first church meetings I've been in. Who was it? I think it, in the usually if you get called to office, it's not for anything good. <laughs> but this one, that was, I was like, yeah, well, it was I, interesting. I'll vouch for you. You you knocked it out of the park. I even was I was bragging to people today. Now this is going to sound harsh, so don't don't take it mean. But is I it going to sound huh? like Russell would say it, or is it going to sound like a manly thing? <laughs> 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 That's messed up. <laughs> is it a blossom or a, a, or a groan? A bl- yeah. My, just so y'all know what he's talking about, last week I said our relationship has blossomed, and that really uh, it struck Mike the wrong way. He is not like that. He likes to think that our relationship has grown. And I'm down. I understand that. So we've grown. I told someone today, I said, Mike may not look like he's like Mr. Intellectual. I said, but the dude is smart. <laughs> like the dude can take the bible listen to what somebody's saying and then spit it back to them like in a way that points them to god and is compassionate and understanding all that so i i thought i gave you an a plus yesterday and it wasn't a test that. you didn't show up for a test it was like <clears throat> i just wanted the person we were meeting with en- to encouraging the other brothers absolutely mm-hmm. yeah and and i'll be honest with you after we met yesterday were you encouraged I, <laughs> yeah i was were encouraged you too good but i took some of what you said yesterday into my meeting this morning oh, wow. and was like this goes across the board yeah. this goes across the board i think i like to listen to the unashamed podcast and other um the world and everything in it i mentioned that podcast a minute ago and i didn't get to tell you what it's about but it's like a news podcast but it's a christian based news so they mm-hmm. take all the world events and they talk about now how does this from a biblical perspective how do you approach it mm-hmm. i like listening to those type of things because people are going to ask us very similar questions and that if it's in the world people hear it and they're going to have those same thoughts and so and that's kind of my approach not not on purpose mm-hmm. it's just again that the, the calling you get <clears throat> he'll equip you for whatever he calls you to do is and I'm, I'm trying to make sure i say it right sometimes i have to think about it mm-hmm. it's we're just talking about life what we you know what we go through in a week and then apply it to the bible but i think we we take our life and see show how the bible applies to our us mm-hmm. because the bible was written for us and it's it's got a lot of titles one title could be a gps to show you how to get through it mm-hmm. and if you run into stuff it shows you where you can go to the help center mm-hmm. and so it's and we've talked about it before and people like well, I'm just looking for happiness or looking for satisfaction. Or it's like, well, I'll tell you where you can get it. Yeah. So, but it's not happiness you're looking for. It's this the joy and the peace. And same thing we spoke about yesterday. Yeah. That's that's what you're looking for. Right. You may not know it, but you are because the one that made you made that into you. So you and him can connect and have that connection and a very intimate connection. <clears throat> and they're like, well, I just don't know. I was like, well, I do. Because mm-hmm. I was there, and now I'm over here. Right. I and said, it, it works. And I had a <clears throat> thought yesterday and today after we, had, after we did those meetings yesterday and then some things I had to do today. The Bible really does have the answers for all of your <clears throat> problems, and, and, and it almost seems too simple. Like when you give them the answer, when it's I was like, no, it's got to be more complex than that. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be yeah. deeper than that. It's like, no. Nope, and I it. think sometimes people want a better answer than you're a child of God. Don't feel that way about yourself. Mm-hmm. Know that you're loved. Know that you're cared for. Um, have faith. Know that the same God that you met on that first day of salvation is the same God today, no matter where your life is. Mm-hmm. He hasn't changed. You just keep chasing after Him. And, and he's going to reveal himself to you somehow. I don't. I don't know how. Many many ways, and he does it every day. We just we just don't see it all mm-hmm. the time. It's been really cool this week. Uh, 
just experiencing God, honestly. I'm, I, I've had a lot of conversations, and I think I'm getting to a point in my, what do you say, your pastorate, like when you're doing your, being a pastor. Would um, it be pastoral? <laughs> in my pastoral <laughs> job, and in, in your I don't pastorate. Uh, like you're I, I'm just getting, a pastor. I'm, uh, <laughs> I think I'm getting to a different level. Where, you know, you have to work for a while before people will trust you with real things. Yes. And so I think I'm finally getting to a place where people will call and say, hey, this is really what's going on in my life, like X, Y, and Z. And they trust you to uh, to keep that, to encourage them in the Bible, to encourage them in whatever. And it's been really cool just to see how God's been. Because, you know, my, my plea and my heart cry is that I want someone to get it. I want someone to... Someone after, did yesterday. Dude, yeah, like yesterday and today, twice today, uh, just different things happened. And it was like, okay, you get it. You 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 get it, and you are trying to figure it out. Um, and so that encourages me tremendously. I called someone today just randomly because um, I didn't see them on Sunday. And I was just checking to make sure they weren't sick and anything was going on in their life. And they said, yeah, I just wasn't feeling good. And I said, hey, what do you think about this and, and they said you know that's funny that you're asking me about that because God's really been working on me in that area of my life and God's really been pushing me to to do something in this in this and this and this and so I was like okay God like I, I see you working and moving amongst us and we're just going to keep moving we're just going to keep moving mm-hmm. keep trusting and and being obedient I, I preached on being holy this week and we talked about the word um kadosh which was Is a kadosh pretty interesting word that was Cut apart, not cut apart. That sounds gruesome. Uh, there, set there apart, you go. <laughs> like cut away from everything, and it and it basically meant to be every day in all things and everything you do, and be striving for the holiness of God, and which we will continuously fail just because we're sinful people and our nature is not God nature. Um, but being it created in His image, we can chase after that, and I've seen that in people in the last couple of days. So it's been really encouraging to me as a pastor man just as a man forget as a pastor but just as a person in this world it's been encouraging yeah because when you when you live the I'm, I'm i'm looking something up as you were saying that i'm looking up the beatitudes is what i'm doing yeah matthew chapter six <clears throat> i was just five reading. is it five yeah good job was, pastor i thought it was six i just read it good earlier. job pastor Look, Matthew 5, I'm looking right oh, at it. Oh, it's 5 right there. Huh? I was trying to get to 6 because that's where I was getting to earlier. I started reading at 5, though, so I could have some context. Oh, uh, I thought. It is 5. She saw the crowd. He came up to them. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, what I'm looking for, is, is, it, the, is it the Lord's Prayer or the Beatitudes that says, Be perfect because your Father is perfect. Mm-hmm. Would that be the Lord's Prayer? It's not in the Lord's Prayer. I thought it was in the Beatitudes. That's why I wanted to look it up. It's like, that's the first thing he talks about is be be perfect like your father. It's like, okay, how? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. what it, what it, how is he perfect? You know? That was the, uh, that was part of my difficulty last week, talking about God's holiness. And was it, what did he say, perfect or holy? I can't remember. It's, it's I don't know. Here. I got the... Matthew ver- uh, chapter wrong, so I don't want to say the Matthew wrong. version. Yeah, I don't want to get the, that wrong again, and you call me out, so I'll let you find it. Well, somebody was going to call you out on that. <laughs> well, so oh, I guess I just at, beat them wait, to it. <laughs> you mean out of the 15 people that, that are going to watch? <laughs> All it takes is one, sir. <laughs> uh, I don't it know. says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, it's got to be the Lord's Prayer. So um, it, it may be in Matthew where you're right, because uh, I, I, Google helped me out, but Matthew 5.48 says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Is that the one you're looking for? Yeah. So Matthew 5.48, when he's talking about love your enemies. 40, okay, I'm on 28. That's a hard one, too. Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. 
that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He yeah, be perfect, therefore, as your mm-hmm. heavenly Father's person. All right, well, okay, well. 548. Okay. Yeah. Was like, How do you do that? You know, I thought, it, I thought that was actually the opening of the Beatitudes, but. Holy. Yeah. Chasing after it all the time. That's really hard. Mm-hmm. Especially God's holiness, because what we ended up finding out on Sunday was holiness is more than just a characteristic or an aspect of God. It, it, the, what I was saying was it, it's the essence of God. It's like the whole aura of who he is, mm-hmm. and we're to strive after that with our lives and the way we act, the way we conduct ourselves and talk to, to people, the way we treat people, the way we respond in situations. And, man, that can be hard. Yeah. can be difficult. I was listening to you when I was up there in the oh, ark. Yeah. You were up there last week. Yeah, I had to... Had and then I've security. been watching this week, finishing up the uh, the chosen. What I've been the series I was mentioning last week. I'm, I think I got two episodes left. But last night Jesus was. Um, it, it's just fun to watch the, their interpretation. I'll say it again of what the scripture was going. But when Jesus starts teaching, and it says that all the people started gathering around, and mm-hmm. uh, this is the part where it was so, the house was so crowded that the people bring the lame man, and they couldn't get him in, so they take to him the to roof. the rooftop and yeah. lower him down that's the part it's at and i stopped it right when they came up with the man but it was really cool just to you've read the scripture and and they tell you that this house was so full that the people couldn't get to him but to really see it in video and see people around a table then people looking through windows and outside just crowds gathering and they can't get enough of it couldn't get enough yeah. of it they were just soaking it in and and he was just quoting this what we know as the scripture now but mm. in the setting of the show he's just talking yeah, and it was kind of cool to know what he was saying. Um, and these people, obviously, in the show, they're hearing it for the first time, and you could just see how that would have impacted them in that day because what they were taught was so different than what he was teaching, and just the way that it was obviously having an impact on them immediately. And that's what I think we strive for is for people to see the realness of Scripture as we talk about it and how they can apply it to their life, like you were saying. It's more of a it's more of a take God's word and application than just take it and believe it. It's like, okay, mm-hmm. I, I do believe it. And how do I live it? It becomes a whole different and thing. I, I th- and I'm just trying to go back to before I, I really just turned it all over and got saved myself. It's what are we so afraid of leaving behind? And <laughs> I guess because you, you live a certain way for so many years. For me, it was 32. Mm-hmm. So when I finally just hit rock bottom, it's like, what? Well, why was I so afraid to leave all of that behind? Mm-hmm. You know, what, why was it? Why did I think it was so great compared to anything else? I mean, e- any other walk of life, not just a, a biblical walk. Ultimately, that's what you need to do to to have the what you're searching for. Mm-hmm. Well, wh- why is it so hard for us to to see that? I guess. Uh, the world and society or ultimately Satan, Lucifer, uh, he don't want you to see it. Because then you'll you'll turn from him and his ways and his pleasures and head after what God has for you. And I think sometimes um, from working with, when I worked with high school students and some of the college students over at Clayton State, um, they have this preconceived notion or thought that if they are to if they believe in, in Jesus and if they start wanting to try to change their life for that that he's going to take away everything fun that they know yeah because what they know up to that point is like partying is fun and going out and getting drunk and hanging out with your friends is fun and and, and just being whatever is fun and what they miss is that God when when you turn it over to him he starts changing what you think is fun mm-hmm. you know for me doing a podcast talking about God things 15, 20 years ago wouldn't have seemed fun. No. But he changes, like, your passions. You start seeing that, you know, all that may be fun in its time and have its place and all that stuff, but the true fun is doing what God puts you here to do, mm-hmm. to spread his word and to, to be a positive impact in this world because the Lord knows there's enough negative influence in this world and the the dark one, the Satan, the, the evil one is always out there trying to tell you how bad you are and how you'll never be successful and yeah. how... You shouldn't even try. Yeah, just beat yourself up and just stay here. Yeah. It, you're safe and you're, you, this is familiar to you. Mm-hmm. Just stay right here. And I think uh, the fear of. Yeah, don't, don't try to 
better yourself. Don't just you've lived this way this long. Just just stay right here. You're good. Yeah. You're good. And I think it's the fear of coming across hypocritical mm-hmm. that just hinders some people. They're like, well, I can't do that. So I'm not even going to try to tell somebody how to be good if um, I'm not living it because I'm just being fake. And then you come to the realization that everyone trying to do it is gonna is still struggling. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, every preacher, even Billy Graham. I mean, oh, as yeah. good as he can get up and, and share the gospel and, and and take a whole stadium full of people and have them rush the altar and convert over to being Christians, the man still had sin in his life. He did. Because he's a yeah. human. I mean, uh, Adrian Rogers that I told you a couple of weeks back about the, the preacher you can listen to, Charles Stanley, um, doesn't matter who it is. You were talking about Ravi Zacharias yesterday. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Ravi. But, you know, even him, yeah. the, the great apologi- apologist, we learned. Well, apologist. Apologist yeah. that yeah. he was. Um, biblical lawyer. Biblical lawyer, yeah, like that. Uh, he still had sin in his life. He did. And he didn't let that sin hinder him from doing what he knew God called him to do, go out and spread the, the good news, spread the truth. Mm-hmm. And that's what we got. I think me and you are getting there. Mm-hmm. I think there's still things probably that God prompts our heart to do and we're still kind of like mm, I don't know about that you know and, and the thing that we know intimately that we struggle with uh, not everybody but there's thousands of people that struggle with the same thing absolutely thousands of mm-hmm. them and I, I forwarded forwarded did was that right forwarded it forwarded, 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 it? forwarded is that right <laughs> forwarded would it be D E D or just D <laughs> You forward. sent me an article. I got it. You did. I got it. I read but it. It was something about the church, right? I read it, yeah. yeah. Why? Why? Like, what is the church? Yeah. What supposed is supposed to be doing? Yeah. Like, why? Why are we even here? <clears throat> That's what we actually went over and reclaimed. Okay. Sunday, and it's us. Mm-hmm. Well, there, there's an article I read. It's God kind of has two churches in mind, not two separate churches, but a universal church, mm-hmm. like a world church. And then like a local church, you know, to help the community. Mm -hmm. It's like a universal church wouldn't be focused on a community. It'd be focused on the the entirety of the body. So it's it's the same church, just on different two different levels. Mm -hmm. And and it's us. And that's why I I like the Zoom thing, you know, because we we're still doing the the podcast and we're still doing the same Bible following the same God, we're just in a different place. Yeah. It's the same word. Yeah, it's cool to, to see technology working. Like I was mentioning, the, the church member that was in Texas this weekend watching. I know my family watches all the way in L.A., in lower Alabama. I know that we have uh, church members that have family in Oklahoma that will mm-hmm. watch us. We have some church members now who are back in Los Angeles because uh, their mother passed away, and so they're there for the funeral next week. They watch. And so, yeah, you're right. It's just, it's a global outreach that no mm-hmm. matter where you are and what the medium is that we're using to get the the information out there, we're still getting it out there. And so, yeah, it's and it, cool. it's amazing. It amazes me that there was one article that said, I mean, even some, pa- now he didn't get detailed and didn't say names, but the, there's like, there's pastors that are leading churches and they're they're good at what the calling that they have but they struggle with pornography of course it's like it's all sin mm-hmm. you know we're not we're not putting ourselves on a pedestal like some people i was t- me and Haley were talking the other day and uh we were talking about now i don't know how the government structured i said but that's why when it was set up it was set up where it had multiple people because it said one man shouldn't have all that power yeah i said but then when these people get into some kind of government position it's like well i'm i mean i'm here now you're down there you're the peasants and i was like they'll they'll just stroke themselves another check go home and sedate their feelings away and they won't have to deal with it yeah i said the i said like probably a lot of doctors and stuff because they they do have to deliver horrible news all the time i said they ain't no telling what kind of addictions they have mm-hmm. but you don't see it Mm-mm. 
we were talking to somebody recently, and um, they were in the medical now, field. Some, you know, not all doctors. Yeah, we, so. we were talking to someone recently, and they're in the medical field, and they said that you would, speaking to what you're saying, they said that you would be surprised how many doctors and people like that do have addictions because mm -hmm. of what you're saying, just the mm -hmm. stress level of their job. They have to sedate th that yeah, so they can cope with it. Yeah, it's hard to come compartmentalize that, I guess, at some point. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, I'd I'd be right there too, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I think we could take the scripture that we were planning on talking about tonight. We're still making our way through the book of John, um, and we're in chapter eight tonight, and um, we've got past the. You know, another thing I just saw his name in here, but Nicodemus is in the the mm -hmm. show The Chosen. Is like he? He's one of the main characters, and you can just see him. I never thought about it because really, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not because you know a lot about this Bible. Uh, Nicodemus is mentioned a couple of times, but what I remember him the most as is when he came to Jesus in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and, and it was converted and then all these things happened. But in this story, in The Chosen, it's kind of showing Nicodemus was asking these questions and, and really trying to find out about Jesus way before mm -hmm. he knew anything about Jesus. And they even show him talking to John the Baptist like in jail when he's locked up and, and all these things. And so... Uh, Nicodemus was a is, is a cool character in this show, and I think he's a really great example in the Bible of uh, a Pharisee that had been taught and knew all the ways mm -hmm. of, of the Torah, you know, the, the books of Moses, but he was open to the Holy Spirit changing all that. He mm -hmm. was open to God being bigger than anything that they... One thing he said last night, and it's not Scripture, but it's the way they interpret it, he was saying, so I understand that we know the Torah. I understand that we know what we know. But isn't God big enough to totally change what we think we know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Are we putting God in a box and saying, no, 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 no. You said this is how it's going to be, and that's the only way it can be, and that's what mm -hmm. we believe. And so I thought Like that God was, can't change his mind. God can't, no. You're set. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was, <laughs> that was kind of Just like when, before he flooded the earth, he's like, I regret mm -hmm. making humans. Mm-hmm. Some will flood it. So he can change his mind if he wants to. Yeah. I, th I think he has that right. Absolutely. Yeah. And the way we are, uh, sinful people that God continues to save over and over again, I'm glad that he can change his mind because there's probably moments he's like, I'm done with them. <laughs> We're, he probably sees us like that fly that gets in your truck <laughs> and you're driving down the interstate. Yeah. And that fly is constantly flying at the front windshield trying to get out. He said that that's probably how God sees us. It's like, oh, you people are just so stupid. <laughs> I got the window down, and you're still going to try to go out the front windshield. I've given you the way to escape. And uh, you just like but Nicodemus, I believe, not his first appearance to Jesus, but he, he did try to. Now, I'm thinking of the Bible mm -hmm. also that mm -hmm. came on the History Channel Oh yeah, um, years back. I was watching that last night. Uh, Caiaphas said, we'll go and challenge him. Mm -hmm. So he did, especially with the coin, you know, do we pay taxes or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and he, they never could corner him. They couldn't corner Jesus. Just like in John 8, we were, we might get to. Yeah. Uh, and then there was some, and Caiaphas said, well, he got you. He goes, he's, he's not your typical Israelite. Or your Hebrew, or, or some prophet, or whatever they were calling him at that time. Mm -hmm. And then in John three is when Nicodemus went and, and had the so-called private meeting, whatever it was, in the evening. And it's like in his word, and I was like, because we went through John three, and I mean it was it. We hung out in John three, just the beginning of it. It says, now there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, and this is, this is what I was wanting to get at in verse 2. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no other could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus just said, we know who you are. I know where you come from. Mm -hmm. That's the only explanation. Mm -hmm. So he just said, he called him rabbi. So he's acknowledging that he is a teacher. Mm -hmm. And rabbi is Hebrew for teacher. 
He said, I, I know where you're from. Mm -hmm. You're from God. So he was just like Peter and Philip and Nathaniel and Mary and John the Baptist. It's like, the, you are the Messiah. And then Jesus went on. He and Nicodemus was already trying to trap him, but Jesus didn't bring it up. He said, "Now you were a dirtbag to me back there. You know that's what we would do." Yeah. But no, he said, "No, you, you're good. Mm -hmm. You're good. This is, this is a, you got to be born again." And he's like, "Born again? <laughs> Ain't nobody had heard of that up no. till then." Mm -hmm. And then Nicodemus, uh, he defended him when they did the mock trial. He said, aren't, aren't we supposed to do this during the day? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, with other members. Right. And then Nicodemus is the one that performed the burial. So he, 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 he knew who Jesus was. Yeah, God allowed him to play a huge role in yeah. revealing who Jesus was and the power that he had. Yeah. Yeah. So John chapter 8 um, starts like this. It says, then they all went home. That Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. You said this was like you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, home. 753. I, I've got yeah. another Bible tonight. I don't have my regular Bible. Uh, 753, then each went to his own home, and then 8-1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. It's like, yeah, meanwhile, on the riverbank, <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? I'm not telling you. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 2 says, At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery, and they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. And now what do you say? Again, they're trying to catch him up, like trip yep. him up, trying to get him to say something out of turn or uh, uh, contradict scripture. It says they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. It says, but Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the oldest ones first until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. And Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? And no one, sir, she said. And then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus uh, basically said, We're all the same. You guys are all the same. Every one of you have mm -hmm. sin in your life. Hers may be adultery and whatever you're accusing her of. Yours may be something else. But, but without... God, without me saving your soul, we're all on a on doomed, a, on a, doomed, doomed. On, the, on the fast track to hell. eternal fire. Hell, yeah, yeah, let it hell. Yeah, I don't know hand basket, but I don't know if a hand, hand basket, basket would <laughs> would make it to hell. Yeah, uh, so uh, I like, I just like the the fact that Jesus didn't even entertain their their tomfoolery he didn't even fool their nonsense he just i would love to know i know i think you had a something you read before said what um what, what he was, was he writing, writing? The yeah yeah Bill, billy graham thinks he was writing ten commandments really huh. he was just bent down writing thou shalt not have any other gods before me thou shalt not could yeah. commit adultery thou shalt not murder and there thou it is commit adultery steal. and then they brought her an adulterous woman yeah and the big thing in those verses was that 11, 11 verses, people are, you know, we focus on the on, on the situation, it's, but I wanted to focus on a person in there. And what about the adulterous woman? Mm -hmm. The Pharisees weren't concerned about her. You know, they weren't concerned. What about the dude? I mean, it could have been a dude or a girl. I mean, that she was having a, yeah, being a, if you're having at a, I don't know, having sex with, would it be having an adulterous affair with them? I, yeah, sounds right to me. I mean, well, I figure if you have an affair, you're married. <laughs> yeah, she was having sexual relations with someone. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they weren't concerned about the woman. Mm -mm. They weren't concerned about who she was having sex with. Mm -hmm. 
They just wanted to catch Jesus. It's like, man, this dude is just, he's interrupting our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. We do not like this. He has got to get out of here. Yeah, the whole idea of God and God's forgiveness being available to anyone that was willing to accept it was just a concept that they fully hadn't been taught. And if they had been taught it, they hadn't grasped it. Mm-hmm. You know, God's love was obviously in the Torah. I mean, the books of Moses, God's love was all throughout there. Yes, there was the law, and yes, there was protocols and things they had to follow. But throughout all of that, uh, God's love was woven through it all. Mm -hmm. They had just missed the part that it was for not only the chosen few. It wasn't only for their group. But God was making it through Jesus available for everyone. He gave it to them first. I mean, he offered it to them. Yeah. He, now, first. now the Hebrews are his chosen people. Yeah. I mean, no doubt. The he picked them, the Jews, Hebrews, Israelites. He picked them, but he picked them to be the spokesperson to the world. Right. And they just they kind of missed it. And maybe just through the wars, you know, Joshua going in and kill the Canaanites. Uh, the Jebusites, the Hittites, you know, wipe them all out. Well, he he wasn't really wiping out the people. He wanted to get them out of the land. Mm-hmm. If they if they're like, all right, we we surrender, we're gonna get out. It's like, okay, they probably he probably let them live. Just just don't come in our land. This right. is our land. Right. It's holy land. We want to keep it pure. And then you know, if you were caught in adultery, it, say, it did say to stone them. I mean, they were right in that. But I think they they had a they just didn't view it correctly. Mm-hmm. It's Jesus. He he didn't stone her. Mm-mm. He said, well, where are they at? Well, no one condemned you to death? It's like, no. I'm like, okay, well, neither do I. Because I didn't, I didn't come here to bring death. I came here to bring life. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> he goes on to say, uh, when Jesus spoke again into the temple, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And, and these guys still haven't given up because then they say well here you are appearing as your own witness Mm -hmm. your testimony is not valid and jesus answered them and saying uh, even if i testify on my own behalf my testimony is valid for i know where i came from and where i'm going but you have no idea where i came from or where i'm going he says you judge by human standards and i pass judgment on no one he said but if i do judge my decisions are true because i'm not alone i stand with the father who sent me in your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. And Jesus said, I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. I mean, that's pretty bold. Like, mm-hmm. you're not getting past that defense right there. He says, your own law says that if two people say it, then it's it's true and it's it's a fact. He said, so I'm saying it, and my Father's got my back. Mm-hmm. What you got to say about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, what you got? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? I didn't hear you. That was a mic drop <laughs> moment for Jesus. Yeah, they had a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and then they said, where is your father? And Jesus says, you do not know me or my father. He said, if you knew me, uh, you would know my father also. Um, he says, he spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his hour had not yet come. And so we see... Um, Jesus just continuing to not try to take credit for anything he's doing. We continue to see him just being humble, uh, practicing meekness in what he's doing, and continuously giving all the credit to God the Father. Mm -hmm. He says his hour had not yet come. Um, And so in our own lives, we, we, we have the same. We have the same testimony. We have the same witness with us. We have the same person backing us anywhere we go and anything we say we can say look it's not me that's saying this and you may look at me and say well you're a sinful person and um you who are you to tell me the right way and we can say you're right i am you know, jesus has redeemed me and saved me and i'm not what i'm telling you is nothing i think or nothing i came up with i believe mm-hmm. it because god the father said it and, and, and he's the one that's sending me to say this and so if you got a problem take it up with him and it get, if it's very freeing for us because it's not anything of our own accord that we're trying to do. Uh, we can we're just we got the backing of God and His truth. Yep, like you said earlier, just you 
giving me credit for yesterday and, and in my mind I'm like the things that God can do with a person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said that Sunday in my sermon that it we keep thinking God how you keep using us yeah uh, I was looking up something here and I remember writing it see it's in my other Bible but I don't have it and, and what I'm trying to get to tonight and you can keep looking for what you're going to mm-hmm. but down here we'll skip down to verse um through verse 21 through uh, 30 Jesus keeps telling them that uh, you're from below and I'm from above you are of this world I'm not of this world I told you that uh, you would die in your sins if you not believe that I am he who indeed die in your sins Um, and he says who are you and Jesus just keeps telling them who he is and where he came from and in verse 31 is what I wanted to get to it says to the Jews who had believed him Jesus said if you hold to my teaching you are really my disciples and then you will know the truth and the truth will set you Mm -hmm. free and I think that's really important in the life that's when we really get deep we start talking about that truth and it's setting you free Mm because it sets you free from those thoughts of um, who am I like who I'm, I'm a sinful person who am I to who am I to try to go tell someone how to live their life and Jesus is like, yeah, you are. And, and I died for you, so now you're free. Uh, that condemnation is not holding you back anymore. That feeling of guilt has not got you in um, chains anymore. That feeling of shame is not holding you back anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're free. And so go out and, and live as a free <clears throat> person. Don't let that, that sin that was in your And that's why it's really good to be when you start walking a Christian life and and you feel called to be in in any kind of a leadership position, you might as well just go ahead and air out your dirty laundry, I see, because people are going to start digging it up once you, for some reason, if you do start getting some popularity or mm-hmm. get on radio or TV or something, because you just got a target on your back. Of course. So you might as well just go ahead and air it out. Yeah, I think part of your advice to someone we met with yesterday was, look, if you want to uh, be an evangelist or you want to be an a apologist or whatever you want to be, just just start from mm-hmm. from from the very beginning mm-hmm. admitting all your flaws. You mm-hmm. know, just get it out there because if you go out there and try to present yourself as perfect or, mm-hmm. you know, I'm walking, I'm holier than now, it's going to come back to haunt yeah, you because they, no, they're going to that. Yeah, they're going to dig it up. It's like, well, I'm not on the internet. as oh, everybody's on the internet. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, somehow you're on there. And, uh, but uh, let's see, the truth will set you free. And yeah. then and this is what I, I wanted to connect John to. Uh, it's actually connected to Matthew. I thought it was earlier in John, but it's actually in Matthew. So they answered him, in the, and you're right. It said, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yeah, they answered, "We are Abraham's descendant and have never been slaves to any of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free?" Jesus replied, "I tell you the truth: everyone who sins is a slave to sin." And he he said sin. He didn't specifically say what sin. Mm-hmm. He said sin in general. And then I wanted to tie what they said because somebody warned them way earlier. Not to say we are Abraham's children. And now I found it over here in Matthew 3, 9. And I'll back up just a few verses. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, this is John the Baptist, by the way, you brood of vipers, bunch of freaking snakes, what do you want? Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Mm -hmm. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. He don't need you. Mm -hmm. He he, he just used Abraham to to make the Israelite nation. Mm -hmm. He don't need you. Yeah. And he's like, we, and then over here in 833, we are Abraham's descendants. He's like, 
So? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what Jesus said. So? Yeah. What's your point? That's right. He you know what? Him. Abraham was a sinner too. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jesus has the best defense and the best, like, lawyer on his side. I mean, he's got God. Just yeah. every, and no, no matter what they say, he trumps them every time with, yeah, but God sent me. So you can mm-hmm. say whatever you want, but yeah, God sent me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, nothing I'm saying is, everything you're saying is something a man taught you, you know, yeah. like, and it's something you've learned and, and I'm trying to live out to impress these other men around you. But everything I'm saying is, is from above. Mm-hmm. Everything I'm saying is more than just uh, some human thing. Yeah, I guess it would be like you speak your own authority and your own intelligence. He says, I don't. That's right. I speak what God's telling me to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love this part uh, in um, John 8 in 34. Mm-hmm. He's going to tell you that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever and mm-hmm. I use that twice this week uh, encouraging people because there's been a couple of people I spoke to that uh, are battling with some just like depression and not feeling um, not really happy with where their life is and just who they are as a person and and trying to encourage them and say remember you're a child of God mm-hmm. like you God loves you and God created you and God knows you and God is allowing these things to happen in your life because God may be trying to use these difficult times for maybe if it's not for you then maybe for the people watching you and seeing how your faith is carrying you through this difficult time because you are a child of god Mm -hmm. you are you you're allowed to cry out abba father and have such an intense intimate relationship with him that he knows every detail about your life and even though you may be facing some type of difficulty god hasn't forgotten you god is not punishing you for for whatever God is trying to use your situation and then we get to a place in our in our relationships just saying um am I am I am I faithful enough am I obedient enough to trust that even though it may be a tough situation that God can use it for good and then he's always calling us just to rely on him Mm -hmm. to constantly be in communication with him and, and and say Jesus I don't understand what you're doing I don't know why I'm facing this in my life, uh, but if it can be used for your glory, then okay, show me how to do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and that's what he's saying here. Man, you're 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 if you're a slave to that sin, then you don't have no permanent place in the family. But you're a son and daughter of the King, and you belong to that family forever, in the good times and the bad times, in, in all the times. God is your Father and cares for you and loves for you. Yep. And 36 says, so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And 37, I know you're Abraham's descendants. All right. I know that. Yeah, you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I'm telling you what I've seen in the father's presence and you and you do what you have heard from your father. Mm -hmm. And there they go again. Abraham is our father. If you were Abraham's children then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is written, you are determined to kill me. As it is, you are determined to kill me. A man who has told you the truth. There he goes again, the truth. Mm -hmm. That I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things of your own. Your own father does. We are not illegitimate children. They protested. The only father we have is God himself. If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now am here. And they keep saying, well, we're waiting on the Messiah to come. Mm-hmm. Well, here he is. Now we got to get rid now of this we, guy. We don't like you. No, I, mean, we, I, I don't know about this. We had a different thought. We had we had a different view. And, and me and the um, buddy over here at the shop, mm-hmm. we got in a discussion about that. You know, they were looking for the warrior. Yeah. Riding, you know, with the flaming sword and the horse and the armies and stuff to come and dethrone Rome. Well, you know what? Rome's dethroned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what's the deal? <laughs> if you were, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am now here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you were not unable to hear what I say. You... <laughs> You belong to your father, the devil. <laughs> I think of that. 
Adam Sandler movie. What was it? Uh, he played football. Um, mm-hmm. What was that? Waterboy. Yeah. And his mom was said, the devil. <laughs> <laughs> the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Everything was the devil. <laughs> and you want to carry out your father's desire because what what is one of the devil's desires? To murder. And what do they want to do to Jesus? Mm-hmm. They want to kill him. It's like you're you're listening to the wrong person. It's like I'm right here. Mm-hmm. And again, he's like, you, and John the Baptist said, you, "Don't say you're from Abraham. That's that's not going to cut it. Mm-hmm. That's not enough. That's not enough clout." Jesus finishes up there saying, "Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I'm telling the truth, then why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you don't hear is that you do not belong to God." Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. hadn't fully accepted God. I mean, mm-hmm. I think that obviously they knew the Old Testament, so they had a they had a understanding of God. And what were you saying yesterday? A um, it wasn't an academic understanding, but you were call, you were saying it was a um, a certain type of understanding of God, like some people have it. And oh, other he was saying subjective like knowledge. A, that's what, that was, yeah, yeah, he was saying. Uh, oh, that was what he was saying. Yeah. yeah so subjective. some people have a subjective, like they understand the subject. Mm-hmm. of God like they the whole idea of it but he says what, what they, which, they know John three sixteen. yeah yeah but they don't have that relationship he says the reason you don't hear is that you don't belong to God and I think that's where we uh, have the upper hand here is because we belong to him we've we as believers as people trying to spread the good news have said uh, not on my own accord but this is what God has told me to go out and do um, I belong to him. Like my life mm-hmm. belongs to him. My my talents belong to him. My finances belong to him. My leadership belongs to him. Uh, this church belongs to him. Everything I'm involved in belongs to him. I'm just a mere chess piece. Sometimes a checkers piece, as simple-minded as I am. I'm, uh, I'm more a little peg game at uh, <laughs> Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> the, the little golf tee thing that you yeah, jump around the triangle. Yeah, I'm the little, little triangle where, peg. Where you end up with like 12 still on the table. Yeah, and you, you started, I started with 10. How'd end up with 12? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Those things always Bring me, me another glass of sweet tea. <laughs> it's going to be a minute. Those things always make me feel really dumb. But, but that's what he's saying. He says, I, Jesus said, look, I'm playing chess here, and you guys are still trying to play checkers. You're just too simple-minded. And, and God is doing a way bigger thing here, and he's offering it to you, yet because you don't belong to him, you don't believe it. It wasn't the way you thought it was going to be. I'm not who you thought I was going to be. I'm not acting in a way you thought I was going to act. And so you're trying to find a way to kill me. And he says that's not because you know God. It's because you're following your father, the devil. Hmm. You're, you're misled. We're, so, we're always following somebody. Yeah, absolutely. And something that I wrote, I don't remember. This had to be a few years ago. You know, one of my class assignments, because 46, when you said it, it reminded me of that. It said, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? And I don't even know what the topic was now. I was like, Jesus did live the perfect life because he's got four eyewitness accounts. That's where we get the four Gospels from. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And why would they record that Jesus wept? He cried. But if he ever committed a sin, he was faithful to the law. So if he ever did commit a sin, he would offer up a sacrifice like Moses prescribed. But it's not recorded anywhere that he ever had to offer any kind of sacrifice Mm -hmm. but himself. I said, so why would they record that he cried? But he never sinned mm-hmm. because he didn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a good place to end right there and, and, and understand that we started off by saying why did some young people or why did just people in general have such a hard time of accepting that uh, the gospel is for all and they can really change their life and live for him. It's because they're scared that he's going to take away the, the good or the happy, what they think is, why was it so hard for you and I to, to mm-hmm. give our lives for so long over to him? Because we thought we were going to be missing out on something. And in that scripture, you just said, Jesus wept because his heart was broken over this city that he is offering freedom 
Mm -hmm. free, you know, set free of your sin, set free of the eternal damnation, set free of the strongholds and the grip that sin can have on your life, the guilt, the shame, all that. He's offering it to people. They're not accepting it. And so he's weeping over it because it's just breaking his heart, saying, mm -hmm. look, I'm the answer. Here it is. And, and you're choosing not to believe me. You're choosing to chase after all these things that you think are meeting this need in your life. But really what they're doing is leading you further and further away from the happiness that you're seeking. And so what, we're, what we want to continue to do as a church, as just men, as leaders of our family, as everything, is, is to keep grounded in the fact that uh, we are nothing. We're mere vessels, people that God is using to... Just messengers. To spread the gospel. Just messengers. And, and yet we're going to fall short. Yes, we're going to sin. Yes, we're going to let people down. We're not going to meet expectations. Um, and God knows that. And mm -hmm. he still chooses to use us. And so, and we're nothing special. And so he can use you too. And the, everyone listening to this podcast, you don't have to be on a podcast to go out there and make a difference in someone's life. Uh, Jesus said, go love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so you can serve your neighbors, and mm -hmm. everyone's your neighbor. You can go out and show compassion to a neighbor. You can show uh, encouragement to someone. You can maybe even get to know your neighbor's name. Yeah, I've been trying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying. I know that was a low blow, but I've been trying. <laughs> I know my neighbor's name. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Well, okay, that's kind of cheating. Your dad lived across the street for a long time, so that mm -hmm. was... Oh, that was kind of cheating. And yeah, I know the other the neighbors that, beside him. I knew the people, the last three or four people that lived in the house. Well, and, oh, okay. Next week when we come in, I'm going to bring some chocolate chip cookies and give them to you because you you beat me on that. Me give you I'm just saying, I know. you know, I don't know your neighbors. No. It's hard I know you neighbors. got a lot of feral cats running around through there. <laughs> sure oh, my. There's, well, there was that, there's that one house. When I'm coming down your road, it's on the left. I think I got an old golf cart. There's like five or six cats. I mean, if you look at them wrong, yeah, it's right. like, you eyeballing me? Hey, listen, the Jonesboro <laughs> has an app. It's called like the One One Jonesboro app, and you can go on there and basically you can go on there and complain about anything in the city that you don't like. That was one of their complaints that popped they up They needed there. an app for and, that? Yeah. I mean, they, didn't, they were probably talking about I mean, what's wrong with Facebook? Uh, yeah. That's another place to complain. Twitter, great place to complain. But someone complained about that. And all those that cat, lady? Those cats. It, it, with the golf cart in New York? Yeah. They didn't complain about the golf cart. They complained about all those cats over there. And uh, they're still there. Although on the app. They ain't the nobody going to go mess with them cats. Said, the problem is taken care of. But they're still there. So I don't know. You got me off track. I was trying to wrap us up because we're at a little <laughs> over an hour, and I was wrapping us up saying how everybody can be used to uh, make a difference in this world. You don't have to be a pastor or a That's preacher right. let or God a teacher. Use you. Just let God Just use let you. Let him use you. Just let go. Let him set you free and uh, be released from all those things. Uh, released from depression, released from uh, the fatigue of continuing to try to think of a way to, to fix your life. Just trust in him. Allow him to work. And he promises to meet every need that you'll ever have. I, I've so. come to find out, being in the mechanic world for almost 22 years, you can't repair everything. Right. Some things are just meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Same thing in life. Yeah. You can't fix it on your own. Uh, lean into the one that can and watch him do his work. Uh, remember to uh, like and subscribe. Share this thing on your Facebook. And Twitter. don't don't commit adultery. You might get stoned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you're around that group of people because they all walk off because they realize... They were sinners, too. Yeah. So we appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. We'll catch up with you guys next week. It's Thanksgiving week is coming up, so we're going to try uh, to record next, next week? week before yep. Mike uh, goes out of town. And for yep. I, um, Meanwhile, at the Mount of Olives, that's right. I'm out. All right. You guys have a good week, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless.